oil is not supposed to be that thin. Hey, what's going on everybody? Alex here with Freedom Mowers. I hope you all are doing well. This is going to be part two of our series of the free push mower, turning that into $2,000. Hopefully you guys checked out the first video. If you have not, I will put a link in the description. So I actually just got the push mower or the self-propelled lawn mower listed this morning for $140. I'm hoping to get $120 for it. I did give you guys a sneak peek of this Bolin's uh, riding mower in the last video. This was a freebie from a friend of mine. He was actually doing a scrap run and somebody that he was working for had this out in their yard. It's been sitting for years and asked me if I wanted it and it was a perfect time for this video series. So basically the money we take from our push mower, we'll be able to put some money into this and hopefully we'll have $400, $450 riding mower and then we can buy something else after it. But let's get a rundown on this machine. Right off the bat, you guys can see this thing is super crusty. I believe this is a 2005 Bolens. It is a six speed on the fly or whatever they consider that. It's just the variable drive. MTD setup on here. Uh, 38 inch cutting deck, the mowing deck on here, uh, the support for the outside you guys can see is broken off and they must have hit something with the front here and it's rolled this whole side in so we're going to have to pull that out and re-weld that bracket back on. It did have both front tires off from the beads. I just spent the last hour wrestling these back on and I didn't even want to show that process because it is a pain in the butt but I do have both tires back on the beads and I was able to roll it over here we are rocking a this stuff is caked on there 15 and a half Intec or overhead valve I did look it said 05 on the engine Wow, air filter actually looks really good. There's a pre-filter in here as well. Yeah, it's pretty dusty underneath, but I expected a lot worse than that. All right, well, that's a good sign. Is there any gas in here? Bone dry. All right. Uh, let's see, probably have to get you guys on the tripod to get a real check of the oil in here. There's definitely oil in there and it's not black, so. They did say this ran when it was parked, so we should be able to just start this right up with a key. Because there is no key, and you guys can see that the keyhole is filled with mud. So yeah, it ran when parked, so we should just be able to put a jumper pack on it, splash of gas, and this thing should be ready to rock and roll, right? Yeah, I doubt that too. So, all right, let's go ahead, and I'm going to get this thing in the shop. Uh, I'll get you guys on the tripod. We'll get a good check of the oil. We're going to throw a jumper pack on this thing. I'm going to make sure it's not even locked up, and we'll probably put some spray down in here and see if we can get this thing to kick off and go from there. get a proper reading on this oil now we got it on level ground always want to make sure you wipe the dipstick too yeah this thing is way over full it's full up uh, right on the ridges on the stick our full line is way down here and it smells like straight gas right off the bat we have a needle and seat issue so the carburetor has let fuel past the uh, seat and overfill the carburetor instead of shutting the fuel off and basically filling the crankcase of the engine with gas. Pretty common thing. I didn't even check actually. Let's see what carburetor is on this one. Okay, well we have a Walboro on here so it's better than the uh, the Nikki carburetor. More than likely, just sitting for so long that gas just crept by. But we will have to see. So, unfortunately, we can't just try to start cranking on this thing because that 
with that much uh, gas and oil in the crankcase, it's probably not even going to get past the compression stroke. So I would say let's go ahead and drain the oil out of here. We'll see. Actually, let's just throw a jumper pack on the back. I'll see if I can get a key past this mud dauber's nest here in the keyhole. We'll just give it a quick bump, make sure, see if we're getting power. Uh, make sure we're getting power to the starter and everything. And then we can, we'll drain some oil out and then we'll see if we can get this thing rotating uh, from there. As long as that seems like it's good, we'll just probably drain the oil all the way out, throw some fresh oil in it, and then we will go ahead and see if we can get this thing to bust off on some starting fluid. All right, I was digging around in the drawer here and I found a nice crusty key that will match the crustiness of this tractor. I did already poke it in just to make sure it was gonna fit. <clears throat> and we got the key. Like I said, it's a 2017 battery. It's got a nice amount of corrosion on there. Should give us plenty of good contact for the uh, ignition system on here and the starting system. We'll see. Sometimes these safeties like to work or don't like to work with the park and brake down. You have to actually push all the way down on the pedal. So, let's just see. Yeah, I got a whole lot of nothing here. Let me push down on this pedal. There we go. Alright. Seen some sparkulator action going on back here. You know, with that good connection I was talking about. Alright. So, before we go tearing something up, we definitely have power all the way to the starter, and it is trying to rotate the engine, which is probably hydro-locked right now. Let's get some of this gas out of here. I'm going to get everything set up, but I'll show you guys. I'm sure how thin this oil is going to be when it comes out. So, I've got my little funnel here. Should have this about finger loose now, if I can actually get in here. But we are going to see how thin this oil is from the gas. Oh yeah, that's perfect. And you guys can see how smooth things go. Oh my lord. Oil is not supposed to be that thin. Let's hope it didn't wash out the cylinder. Sometimes if you have that much gas in the cylinder, it can actually kind of wash out the rings um, or start to uh, get into the cylinder walls a little bit, but we shall see. Now the whole shop's gonna smell like putrid gas because it's dripping all over the floor, but you know, day in the life out here. All right, and I finally got this thing done. Uh, I did end up just putting some used motor oil through here as well just to flush everything out and now I'm getting ready to put some fresh oil in so I'll finish this up and then I think we'll roll this outside and finally see if we can possibly get this thing to kick over on us all right well the whole shop reeks of gas now so forgot one other thing we got to do too is uh, get this spark plug out and we'll hook the jumper pack up and rotate this engine we'll see if it's full or not because it should just start leaking out when we pull this plug might be able to just spin it by hand oh yeah there we go you guys can see that and we're still rust welded to the pulley down here We go should be free now all right so let me hook up the jumper pack and we'll spin this thing over all right parking brake and we should be good it's gonna be spraying everywhere oh my lord it's a good thing we did this on a day where everything's soaking wet outside You 
guys can see it or not, but it just drenched everything down in here. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over and just spray this thing down with the hose real quick just to get the majority of this gas off from here so we don't have so much of a fire hazard. And then I'll push it back over here and we are going to try the first start. All right, I got it hosed off. I did uh, clean off the spark plug and hit it with compressed air as well. Our oil is full. I've got some two-stroke mix in here. We'll just dribble some of that in. You know, the old musty one trick there. All right, well, here we go. Maybe a little too much fuel. All right. Sure, there was still a ton of gas in places it needs to burn off. I don't know how well you guys can hear that but that engine sounds super healthy extremely quiet and didn't hear anything crazy going on we just had that big backfire at the beginning but I think it's just still loaded up with fuel in the cylinder our tank is completely dry so we'll go ahead and get this thing pulled back in the shop and we're gonna get this carb off See if we can get our fuel system straightened out and then we can move on to all the rest of the tasks on here. We have no idea if it even drives yet. I haven't even checked the spindles or anything like that, but we'll see if we can at least get this thing up and running and we can do a lot more testing. So we will go ahead and take the carb off out here, but I got to take the shroud off first to be able to get that intake tube off. We got two three eighths in the back, back and then we have uh, two Torx heads in the front. All right, nice and easy on the cover. Those four bolts, we'll take this fuel line off. And we've got two seven sixteenths on the outside here, and that will take off our little intake tube. Want to make sure we don't lose our gasket here. And then we have these two 5 16 studs. And we have our fuel solenoid connector here. Pull our choke lever out. It was on the uh, very outside hole. And then we just got a twist. That's it, carbs off. All right, on these Briggs & Stratton with the fuel solenoid on the bottom, it's usually a very small gap between the bowl and the solenoid. I've had to make special wrenches in the past. I don't know where my other one is, so I just had to modify this old 13 millimeter. You guys can see I basically made it very thin. I just took the angle grinder to it and hopefully, yeah because normally uh, most of them just won't fit in between. So I've had to specialty make these. I take so many apart. I'm expecting this thing to just be very gummy. Oh yeah. <laughs> Can you guys see that here? Let me get you in the light. Look at the cheese in there. 
Good gravy. This might be one of the most packed ones I've had. I wonder why the uh, needle and seat wasn't working in here, right? Alright, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't know if this one's going to be savable or not. We are going to do our best. I just went and started, turned on the ultrasonic cleaner. I'm hoping we'll be able to even get this thing apart. I'll probably have to use a punch. It is coming out. Now, is the needle going to come out? That's probably going to be the tough one. Oh, that did come right out. Maybe it just looks a little worse than it is. We're going to give it a shot. More than likely, it just got hung open. The rubber seat actually looks to be in pretty good shape. There's just so much of this, like, crumble on there. I'm going to go ahead and start just getting all this cheese out of here. And hopefully there's no holes in the the bowl because sometimes when they get a lot of corrosion uh you'll actually it'll wear through the metal on the bottom and it'll leak i'm gonna get all this cleaned up and i'm gonna show you guys when i get done and hopefully we can get this carb cleaned up all right and i have spent a good while getting this thing clean I'll show you all the best that i could do we got the float cleaned up made sure that our emulsion tube was totally clear all the ports on here I went through and scraped and scraped and scraped on this bowl. There's still a tiny little bit of some like really pitted rust on there. And also if you guys can see there is a bunch of pitting in the walls. But this one is pretty thick. I don't think we're going to have any issues with leaks. The fuel solenoid was stuck. I got that loosened up. Carburetor. If you guys remember what that looked like before. Sent it through about five times in the ultrasonic cleaner. Went through a bunch of times with carb cleaner, hoping it's going to hold up for us. The main jet on here was totally blocked. We got that nice and clear. Made sure that the needle was all set. And I also went through with a Q-tip and cleaned up the seat area just to make sure there was no corrosion. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this carburetor back together and get this thing back on you guys saw me take it off reverse order and then i'm just gonna flush a little bit of fuel through the tank and in the line and then we're gonna hook it up check for leaks and see if we can get this thing to run and just like that the carburetor is back on show you guys what i did here so obviously reverse order what we did earlier but i put a new fuel filter in put us a shut off and i did flush some uh gas through there and i've just got just a little bit in the bottom so we're gonna go ahead and open this up watch our fuel filter fill up I'm gonna give it a minute here and we're gonna check for some leaks and then we're about to crank this thing really hope that the uh idle circuit inside of this carburetor is not blocked because i did my best to clean this thing out not seeing any leaks yet so let's just go for it uh let's make sure our choke's working cable's a little stiff all right here we go from all that oil and everything that had gone through the crankcase and it looked like our needle and seat had stuck a little bit when we first tried it it does happen especially when the needle's still a little dry but we will have to make sure that the needle and seat's still gonna work it is idling really smooth if it'll move I 
boots are slippery from the mud. Oh yeah, we got our jumper pack hooked up. We'll just see if it'll move at all. movement and uh, forward. Think that the belt's slipping. gasket too because all that gas inside of the head may have washed out that head gasket I'm sure you guys can't hear me very well over all that but it does run and everything good. Let's take a look to see if this thing's gonna fill back up. Let's see if our needle and seat's gonna work because we should be able to see it. It'll basically just fill this thing all the way up. I'll turn the uh, key on accessory so our um, fuel solenoid opens up to you. I'll just give it a minute here and see if we just start to see a bunch of gas dumping out. Then we know our needle and seat's still not working. So far, everything looks good and dry. Yeah, see, I think it's gonna work just fine. A lot of times when I put a new needle and seed or when they get cleaned, they'll kind of stick until they get enough gas on there. Uh, the gas itself helps it seal up. Uh, but we're looking pretty good. We'll see if it'll just fire right up now without choke. Alright, well I'm probably going to run this thing for maybe the next 10 or 15 minutes. I need to put a little bit more gas in it. And I'm going to see if the smoke clears up. And that way we'll have a good idea is making sure we don't have a uh, blown head gasket. about 20 minutes no more smoke so I think our head gasket is good and I think we've burnt most of the excess oil out of here so that is great news for our budget here I guess we'll go ahead probably take the mowing deck off from here we can get a good look at what's going on with our belts and a good look at this mowing deck we already know that the front end is all caved in and who knows what's going on with the spindles and everything else so I'll get this pulled in the shop and we're going to get going on that. Alright, well it is next day out here and I have some good news. Yesterday when we tried to move this, it would not go forward, it would only go in reverse. Well, after um, I finished up filming, I was looking at it a little bit and I got down here. And if you guys can see that bracket right there. This armature right here connects to the rod that goes into the transmission, so that's your shift shaft, basically. Well, 
I guess because it sat for so long, it did not, it was just kind of stiff and it wasn't actually going into forward. Uh, so I did put some uh, penetrating spray on there and moved it back and forth for a bit and it was going in and out of forward just fine. So I think our transmission is totally fine and I did test it in the first gear and up to like fourth or fifth. Normally if you can test it in first gear and the mower moves one of these MTDs then usually the drive belt is not too worn. Um, you'll start to notice on these belts when they get worn that if you put it in like first or second and you're not moving but it'll move in like fourth, fifth, or sixth, then the belt's just getting worn out. So I think we're good with that. I'm gonna go ahead and get y'all set up on the tripod and probably time lapse it, but we're gonna take this mowing deck off. We just have that one cotter pin right there. Uh, we have one on the other side. We have the front bracket to pull off and then just taking the cable and we'll slide this whole deck out from underneath and we'll get a good look at it. Chickens are going crazy over there. Let's see. So that spindle is nice and free. A little bit of noise. Not too bad though. Don't feel any real play. Idler is pretty sticky. Bearing feels good. That side's nice and quiet. So I'm gonna go ahead and blow the whole deck off with some compressed air, see if we have any damages here. And if everything looks good, then we will move on to that corner where it is bent in and broke off on the support. And we'll get that pulled back out and get it tack welded up. So we do have one hole right down in this little valley here and you'll see on the bottom side it's kind of a collection point in our area we have a lot of sandy soil so a lot of times these things kind of just get sandblasted through uh, the blades on here are just absolute trash ends are all rolled over and just totally totally gone so those are shot but overall condition looks pretty good under here you guys can see now um, that where this comes down it would basically just catch a lot of sand and debris and it must have worn through unless something really hard hit it and split it out but either way we'll uh we'll get this all straightened out probably cut a little bit of it sand it all down and we'll weld in a little patch and then you guys can also see uh, on the support here where we're gonna have to probably bend this in a little bit and i gotta figure out how i'm gonna pull that whole edge up so far it doesn't seem too bad we just got to bend that back into place tack it get it welded up put a patch on here and some new blades and i think we'll be pretty good shape oh also uh, i believe we are going to need a deck belt on here it looks really good in most places but there was one spot I'm trying to see where it is oh right here so there's one spot, I think it was on a pulley and it must have had some moisture or something like that. Uh, but you guys can see all of the uh, the splitting in there. Get you guys in a little closer. It's weird, it's only like four to six inches of uh, spot on the belt. The rest of it looks really good, so kind of a bummer. But it would be nice to have a new belt on here. But overall, I think we are in pretty good shape. So I'm going to get everything set up and we will get going on this deck. All right, it was taking too long filming and I had to finagle with this thing for a while. But I've got it pretty well set in place right now. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and get this metal all scuffed up and then I will go ahead and get it tacked into place, make sure everything looks good. And then I'll just fully weld this brace. I'll probably add a little bit more down at this end. I'll tap that down and then I'll get a patch cut out and we'll weld that in too.
All right, and I got this side fully welded in. I got it to join up exactly where it broke too, and uh, put some nice booger welds on there. And there was also a crack on this side just where it had so much stress on it uh, when it bent. All right, just got the surface area cleaned up with the flap disc and also our little piece of metal here. So I'll get you guys on the tripod, but I'm gonna weld that seam down and then I'm gonna kind of start shaping it and then we'll get it fully placed in. Alright, well there we go. Grinded it down a little bit, but we got our patch on there nice and strong. Alright, and it is the next day. I have gone ahead and scuffed down a lot of the spots where the paint was chipping on here. I didn't go for perfection, but tried to clean it up a bit and get us at least a good bonding surface. I'm just going to be using some Rust-Oleum Semi-Gloss Black. And it's a little windy out here today, so I'm going to do my best. I'll show you guys after I get couple coats on here but it should turn out pretty good I've got three coats on here it's certainly far from perfect but it looks a heck of a lot better than it did I also cleaned off the belt guards and sprayed those too I don't have them installed yet but just getting everything set up this is gonna be one last look at old swamp thing here I'm gonna go hit it with the pressure washer and spend some time doing that. We just have a lot of cleaning to do. Let's see. I did also pull out the battery tray that's in here. Uh, that way I can get down to the transaxle and get all that stuff cleaned up in there. And we are going to have to re-glue the seat down, which I actually just made a shorts recently on. So... I probably won't go over that all the way. So we're making good progress. I did also find a used belt. I will show you guys. It's actually an OEM belt. And it seems to be in fair shape. So uh, for the deck. I'm going to get pressure washing. And you guys will see this thing after I'm done. And just like that. With about, I don't know, 15 minutes with the pressure washer. There was a lawnmower underneath all that algae. This thing cleaned up surprisingly well i did have to scrub some stuff i did degrease put some degreaser and scrub the tank really well because a lot of that algae didn't want to come off still got a lot of detailing to do but the paint is actually in pretty good shape maybe that stuff protected it yeah overall though it cleaned up really nice you guys can see i got down there sprayed out the best i could inside around the transaxle and the pulleys to get all that dirt and debris out but yeah i am really happy how this is turning out but i'll show you guys what i'm buffing with and i'll show you a spot on here when i get done and then uh, we'll move on all right and for the buffing process i just have a random orbital buffer i bought years ago still use it all the time i need to get some new pads i'm just using what i got i've got this orange pad and using just some cheapo turtle wax rubbing compound on here and I'm gonna go ahead and start by just getting some on there I guess I'll try to just do like we'll just do one half and I'll show you guys but I'll go ahead and set you on the tripod and time lapse it real quick and then I'll show you guys what the final result looks like I don't know how many comments I've had where people ask me how I clean these things up. I am going to make a full length video. I actually did one and I lost all the footage at one point. But, alright, here we go. What do you guys think? 
turns out pretty nice. I mean, that was, I don't know, four minutes maybe. So you guys can see how much difference. Let me get on the other side. You guys can see that paint on this side versus over here. I mean, there's definitely a lot of imperfections in it, but from a few feet away, see so you can barely see the the bulb in there on this side and you can see how clear it is on this side. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and finish buffing this. I'm gonna get this seat glued down and we're gonna keep moving from there. All right, well, it has been probably like four or five days since I've been able to work on this machine. I've had a lot going on here at the house. It's actually, my kids were on spring break. I was trying to put together a kids clubhouse, which actually took two days. But um, yeah, I think finally just about finished with our Bolins here. Where we left off, I was showing you guys buffing the paint. There was some other stuff that I normally do on these. Uh, just to kind of clean things up a little bit. I will show you on the foot wells. I bought a roll of some grip tape a while back, like a 50 foot roll. I just cut some pieces out to fit and now we've got some new grips in the foot well. I did also re-glue the seat down, which I will probably make a full length video on it. I did a little shorts where you guys can see, just take some liquid nails, glue it on, and then take some black silicone and go around the edge. We got the deck painted on here. I did put on a OEM used belt that I had from another machine a while ago, uh, but we will go ahead and just put that into the cost. I did put a used battery in here, but it doesn't seem to be working very well, so I'm probably just gonna go up to Tractor Supply and get a brand new one. And I have also been trying to scout some 38 inch blades for this and i'm having some difficulty anywhere locally so i'm gonna have to order those online as well so right now i still have those old blades on here i've already gone to tractor supply and lowe's and neither one of them had blades for this so i'm gonna order online i'll show you guys underneath of the hood came out really nice just went through and cleaned and cleaned uh, the air filter was good on here i blew that out and other than that i think this thing looks pretty sharp i will go ahead and put the jumper pack on here crank this thing up we're going to test everything out make sure it's all good to go and then i'll tell you guys what i've got to put on real quick before i put it up for sale and we'll put a cost breakdown all right pack is hooked up i have not run this in a few days actually i need to see how much gas was in here just barely enough so we will choke it and should be good to go here I guess we didn't have enough gas. I uh, say we did have enough gas, but uh, when you turn the fuel valve off, it doesn't work. So let me start this back up again. So you guys could have told me the gas was turned off. Let's try this again.
overall I think this machine turned out really nice what do you guys think let me know down in the comments below I think we pretty much have everything on this machine functional ready to go so let's talk about cost breakdown on here realistically I just had some time in getting everything clean and working right we were able to use the original carburetor on here I uh, used a little piece of fuel hose probably like a I don't know maybe one dollar filter on here the shutoff valve clean the original filter we do need a new battery so that's gonna be about $40 uh, our belt on here probably about $30 uh, I did have this one but I would like to include the cost uh, probably about $30 on the blades so I say we're gonna be right at about $100 on this machine and I don't really think that's too bad at all uh, at the end of the day so on our original push mower ended up basically getting 120 out of that machine so now we're gonna have a hundred in this so we were basically left with 20 bucks extra and I don't know I'm thinking about listing this for about 450 uh, I would take 400 for it at the end of the day I feel like we'd be in pretty good shape at that point because I know if we can get $400 out of this then we should be able to find something fairly decent to be able to flip on our next one so yeah I'm pretty excited about it we got this thing up and going we are moving right along with the free push mower to $2,000 challenge so I will obviously keep you guys posted in the next video and uh, I really appreciate y'all watching this series we're gonna keep going and keep pushing and hopefully come across some really cool stuff so on that note let freedom ring let those small engines sing I'll see you all in the next one